Okay, so I have the givens already written in, and I will just talk about the next step. I won't necessarily write it. I'll probably just highlight or scribble. So in this first one, if DE is the same as AC and DE is also the same as AB, then these two have to be the same. So I would say AC is congruent to AB because of the transitive property. Okay. Same idea number six. If L is parallel to M and N is parallel to M, and that's given, if they're both parallel to M, then they have to be parallel to each other. So step two would be L is parallel to N because of the transitive property again. So that was the new thing we learned today. Number eight, PQ bisects RS. So be careful here. PQ is the bisector and RS is being bisected. So here it's going to be, after the given, you would write RT is congruent to ST because a bisector implies two congruent segments. Okay. Number 10. This one's similar except it says they bisect each other. So if they bisect each other, then this is bisected by the other one and this is bisected by the pink one. So you have a couple of things here. Once the givens are written down, you can say RT is congruent to ST and you can say PT is congruent to QT and both of those have the same reason so you could actually write it as one thing over here you can write a bisector implies two congruent segments so each other you're gonna have two whereas in number eight you only had one next page number 12 Triangle DOG is isosceles with vertex O. So I essentially wrote the same thing as my given. There's so a couple of things you could write here. You could say if it's isosceles with the vertex angle up at O, you could say that this side is the same as this side. So you could say DO is congruent to GO because isosceles implies two congruent sides. You could also say angle D and angle G, angle D is congruent to angle G because isosceles implies two congruent base angles. So you're just defining the word from the step above. Number 14, it gives you a, what appears to be a parallelogram. It tells you that AB is parallel to DC. If AB is parallel to DC, then you can say angle 1 must be congruent to angle 2 because parallel lines imply congruent alternate interior angles. Number 16 says C is the midpoint of AE. So it's only the midpoint of this as far as we know. So if that's true, then that's the same as that. So AC, we can conclude, is congruent to EC because a midpoint implies two congruent segments. Number two on the next page, page 15. AD is perpendicular to BC. So we talked about perpendicular meaning 90. So if that's 90 right here, if both sides are 90, then they're the same as each other. So we say that angle, it's this angle here, ADB. So ADB is congruent to ADC, angle ADC, because perpendicular implies congruent 90 degree angles. Number four, D is the midpoint of BC. So if D is the midpoint of BC, then we know that those two are the same. 
So BD is congruent to CD because a midpoint implies two congruent segments. Last page here. This is a new one, but it's, it follows the same you know, pattern as all the other ones. BD is a median to AC. Now remember, a median is nothing more than the midpoint connected to the other corner. So treat it just like a midpoint. If it, if it comes from the midpoint, then we know that D is the midpoint. So we can just say that AD is congruent to CD. So we can treat it just like a midpoint. AD is congruent to CD because a median this time, right? A median implies two congruent segments. So it's just like bisector, just like midpoint, median follows the same pattern. Number eight, D and B are right angles. This is going backwards now. Instead of saying perpendicular and you telling me that they're right angles, I'm telling you that D and B are right angles. So if that's true, then that and that are perpendicular to that. Okay, so we have DB being perpendicular to CD and to AB. So you could write it twice. You could say DB is perpendicular to CD and DB is perpendicular to AB at the bottom. And both reasons are the same because right angles imply perpendicular segments. And the last one, O is the midpoint of both DB, so those two are the same, and it's also the midpoint of AC, so those two are the same. So you can say DB O is congruent to BO because a midpoint implies two congruent segments. And also AO is congruent to CO for the same reason. Midpoint implies two congruent segments. Kind of abstract stuff, but you'll get the hang of it just writing the reason. If you haven't noticed yet, your, your second reason, I'll use this, was, this one as an example. Your reason, the word in your reason usually comes from the word in the statement above. So if you look at all the other ones, midpoint came from midpoint. Perpendicular came from perpendicular. Midpoint came from midpoint. Stop and watch this video as many times as you need to, and hopefully you get this done for tomorrow.